Do you have occasional viewers that are accessing or viewing one of your Power BI reports that you've developed and they're complaining that the results shown in a visual are confusing? Maybe they don't realize they've selected a data point on another visual and that is why the visual is shown the way it is. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a DAX measure that you can use to help show those users exactly what data point selections they have made. My name is Angelica Shukwan, and today I'm going to show you how to use the concatenate x function along with a couple of other DAX functions within a measure to display exactly what selections have been made in a visual to help those occasional Power BI viewers. I'll include the start and the completed file in the description so that you can download and follow along with this video and with this demonstration. So right now in my report, if I were to select an item from the tree map, I can easily see that I've selected the distance group for 2,229 miles. But you might have a user who is not understanding the waterfall chart and why it's just displaying that one distance group, even though you have the filter icon. Now, the other thing you can do, of course, we could talk about the edit interactions feature and you could set it so that this visual just doesn't respond to a selection made on the tree map or any one of these other visuals. So edit interactions is a good feature that could be implemented here. For more on edit interactions, be sure to check out our YouTube video that covers how to set up edit interactions in your reports. So we could go in and modify the default behavior of how these visuals will respond to one another when a selection is made. But what if you want to keep that interactivity? What if you want that level of interactivity there so that when users make those selections, they do see it respond. What if you want that for your users, but you also want to make it clear? Then we would want to leave edit interactions alone so that we can then still have that in our reports. So let's go ahead and start with the measure for the calendar year to show which value in the calendar year is selected. So I have this table over here with my visual measures table. I created this table using enter data where I just went in and gave it a name. And there is a column that's added as a placeholder. We'll delete that once we add a few measures to the table. I'm gonna right click visual measures and select a new measure. And let's go ahead and call this measure the uh, selected values. I'm gonna call it year for short in this example, but you can call it selected values calendar year. The first part of this, we are gonna use that if function because with if we are gonna provide some sort of test a logical test in here where it's going to test based on whatever we provide. And based on that test, if the result is true, provide one value, provide one result. After we type the comma, we're going to say if that result is not true, if that test does not find it to be true, then what do we want it to display otherwise? And that's the result if false. This is an optional parameter, but you typically want to use it with the if function because that's the beauty and the power behind that if function. The next part here is going to be to use that is filtered function. And I'm going to hit shift enter to drop down a line. And I'm going to type this out and pull it in and we'll talk more about it. Now is filtered is just going to return true when there are filters on the specified column. The specified column we're going to add is that calendar year from the date table. So what this is going to do, it's going to say if there is a filter applied in the report, let's have it show that particular filter, what it is, what the value is, and we'll have it concatenated. If there is no filter applied, show all years. So basically, just return all years if nothing is selected. So let's start with is filtered, and this is going to run on that date table calendar year field. So that's the first piece to this. We'll add a closing parentheses and a comma. Now that's our logical test, and next is our result if true. I'm going to hit shift enter here. If we have something shown. I'm going to go ahead here and type the first piece. And we're going to say inside of text, if there are some years selected, show years selected. And let's add a colon, uh, a space, and then I'll add the double quotations there again. So this will appear inside of that card visual all inside of text. That's what's happening there when we wrap it with those quotations. And you can tell it's showing up color coded in red. Now I'm going to type out the ampersand here, and here's where we bring in that concatenate x function. Now with concatenate x and values, what this is going to do is it's going to concatenate any of those values. It's going to combine them into a single string. But when we pair it with values, what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to return a list from the field that is selected, and it's going to tell us what those values are, and it's going to separate them 
by the delimiter that we specify here, which in just a second we'll add is a comma. So let's go ahead here and after concatenate x, first we have to go in and provide our table, the expression, and then the delimiter as well. After concatenate x here, we are gonna pull in next that values function. And so I'm gonna hit shift enter to drop down a line just to improve readability, adding that white space. It really makes it easy when you have these values and your functions broken up on separate lines, because then if there's an error on a certain line, the fewer things you have on that line, it's easier to identify. After values, we're gonna pull in the date table calendar year column. After this, add a closing parentheses and a comma. The next part of this, as we hit shift enter, is going to be our expression, which in this case is really just going to be that date table calendar year field again. Now we're going to add our comma to allow us to now specify our delimiter. I could drop this down on another line. I'm going to put inside of quotations the comma, and I think I'll go ahead and add the space here. That way it's going to uh, separate those out so they're not shown as just kind of one smushed together string. So let's go ahead and add our closing parentheses here. The next piece of this is what do we want it to return if those values aren't selected, if it's showing just all years? Inside of quotations, we can type out all years, all calendar years, something like that. Now we'll go ahead and add our closing parentheses here, double checking that everything that we opened, we close. We must have all of those matching opening, closing parentheses, opening, closing quotations. Now I'm gonna copy this so that once we have this added in, we'll test it here, do a quick check if it is valid. And then um, once we have checked it, we'll go ahead and create that second one and we'll just replace the column. So you could use here the multi-row card, which would allow us to format it and display it as we would like here. Or you can use the new card visual. The new card visual is really nice because there's a lot more formatting options and we'll go through a couple of those here in just a second. From our visual with calendar year, I wanna go and select it to see if it is working and look at that, it is returning those values. Now, the font size here is extremely large, so it is kind of cutting off some things here, some of those concatenated values. Let's go ahead and create our second measure and then we'll go ahead and format that card visual a little bit better once we have both of those in there. So from the visual measures table, I can right click select new measure and then let's paste that same measure in. I'm gonna update the title and I'm gonna call this my selected values distance group. And then we'll replace the field with the distance group name from our table. And I'm gonna go ahead and type it out since I am unable to see it here on the visual. Let me type out flight. Let's spell it correctly here. Flight distance group and then distance group name. That's the one we want. So now we'll go ahead and replace this in every single spot where we had the previous calendar year fields populating it and we'll go ahead and add that in double checking to make sure it is registering and recognizing it no errors are being thrown that's perfect here we'll go ahead and commit that expression and over here from our visual measures table we can delete that column one remember that was just a placeholder that gets created when you create a measures table and now it's uh, going to sort it to the top of our data pane which is a really good best practice as well so in that new card visual i'm going to add this other measure too we do need to update one more thing take a look at that at the bottom we have years selected and all years in the text here let's change that to um, we'll call this our distance group selected we could possibly agree abbreviate it to just group if that was enough context for our users. But I'm going to add fully distance group here to make it easy to see. So make sure you update your text distance group selected and all distance group. That way it's not confusing and it explicitly states what, what we want it to there in that visual. I'm going to go ahead and select a distance group and uh, there we go. It looks like it is showing up there. And if I were to format this, we should be able to tell. On your new card visual, you can change the layout from a row to a single column. I'm gonna do that. And then I'm also gonna go down into the call out values. I'm gonna change the font size to something a bit smaller. Let's do maybe 25 here. That looks better. And I'm also gonna toggle off the label. 
Now with values, we could change the color here to make it something bright that's really going to pop out. And now let's double check and test those again, checking our flight groups. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. So that is pretty awesome here. We can go in and test this for our measure on selected calendar year or selected distance group. All right, everyone, hopefully you liked that creative kind of out of the box solution to help those users who just are occasionally using your Power BI reports and need a little bit of help, some indicator, some nice visual display showing exactly what values are selected. If you liked this tip, please be sure to check out our on-demand learning platform where we have more Power BI courses to help you with visual storytelling like our storytelling course in Power BI, as well as courses on universal design and much, much more. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.